Ah yes, the cockfight game. It's the biggest fucking video game franchise this goddamn Mario. In the 1990s, Nintendo did everything in their power to advertise the ever-loving shit out of Pokemon everywhere. It was popular before it was even popular. You couldn't escape it. The commercials were everywhere, especially that one with the creepy bus driver dude. I swear they played that every five seconds on Cartoon Network. <laughs> Where can you catch all 150 Pokemon? Got ya. On your Game Boy, that's where. Pokemon for Game Boy is here. With both packs, you can catch them all. Game Freak came up with this idea one day of, hey, how about an RPG where 10-year-old kids train monsters to beat the shit out of each other for money and clout? And we'll sell them the same game twice because kids are stupid. Well, what do we call it? Well, they're monsters you put in these little ball containers, so we'll call it Pocket Monster. Wait, no, 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 that's a terrible idea. Americans won't buy their kids something that sounds like a dirty slang. It's like for penis. Boom, Pokemon. We didn't even know how to say it in the 90s. I say Pokemon, and on TV you always heard it said Pokemon or Pokemon. I found a 10 minute video on YouTube just about that. You know what, I'm gonna find this out once and for all. What do the Japanese call it? Pokemon. Pokemon. How about in Swedish? Po Pokemon. Yeah, we got the Pokemon. We got the Yigglypuff. Call it whatever you want. I could give less of a shit. Just don't call it cockfighting because we can live with ourselves a lot better pretending that's not what it is. Now that I pissed all the Pokemon fans off, here's my story. 1999. I was eight years old and Pokemon Pinball was my first Pokemon game. Very freaking odd choice, I know. I was drawn in by the vibration hardware the cartridge had built in. Then I started getting the Pokedex in the game built up and I said, you know what? These character designs are actually really cool. And they are. You get a little bit of everything with the original 151. You had cute designs, edgy, cool, creepy, racist, that's just a fucking bird. 1999 was a busy year for Pokemon. Gen 2 came out, Pinball, Snap, and I had finally gotten Pokemon Red and was trying to catch up to everybody. And here it is. This is my old setup. Same exact one. This is how I experienced Pokemon in 99. Man, I can't tell you how bad I want to pull up a chair and play this on my old TV with my old Super Game Boy, but I got a review to do. Keep in mind, when we played this for the first time, there was nothing else like this. No formula had been written for a monster battle game thingy. This was the first. So if you played the newer Pokemon games but never played Gen 1, you're gonna notice a lot of shit missing. For example, all Pokemon are all one type, not the multiple type stuff they did in later games. There's no Dark, no Steel, no Fairy. And there's no berries or no items that you can let the Pokemon hold. No running shoes so you walk at the speed of Smell. And the walk cycles like jerky. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but you notice how the walk cycle is just kind of like eh, 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 eh. You could tell it's on a grid. That's how it was, man. That's how this game played. It's no secret this game is hilariously janky, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Your name. Okay, that's easy. It's Dixie. I need more excuses to show her off anyway. Rival's name. Okay, what am I scared of more than anything else in the world? The IRS. Dixie is playing the Super Nintendo. You know, Japan got this game two years before we did, and when this game was made, the N64 hadn't come out yet. But by the time we got it, the N64 was already two years old, and the Super Nintendo would get discontinued a year later. Also, who puts their TV on the floor? All boys leave home someday. Yeah, great mother gonna let their 10-year-old kid wander around the country by himself trapping animals and teaching them how to fight. I wonder if any 10-year-old kids ever ran away from home to become Pokemon trainers, and they like take the cat with them. <laughs> Let's go Pikachu, we gotta fuck up Team Rocket. And then the cat gets run over and the kid's like fucking lost in the woods living off of bugs and earthworms. Kid's like, I'm sorry cat pee, but I'm hungry. Ah! Where was I going with this? Anyway, you know what happens. Professor Oak offers you a Pokemon. You get one. The IRS gets one. Guys, either pick Bulbasaur or Squirtle. Picking the starter is almost like picking the difficulty. If you pick Bulbasaur, you can rip Brock and Misty a new ass. Picking Charmander is basically pick in hard mode. I picked Squirtle and named him Turtle Wax. And then we battle the rival. And guys, you know how the Pokemon games have all these cool animations for the moves? Well, check this out. Ooh, ah. This battle's ridiculous. It's just who can tackle somebody the most. Dixie defeated the IRS. Guys, don't you wish we all could defeat the IRS? Well, we better get some Pokeballs or the only thing we're gonna catch is malaria. Is there a mosquito Pokemon? You know, 
I kind of miss when I didn't know this. Well, we can't buy anything from the store until we go back where we came from and give this to Professor Oak. Now we can buy some Pokeballs, and we're ready to start the show proper. Eager to start on his Pokemon adventure, Stuart Care Riley readies his Game Boy emulator for the inevitable grinding he will no doubt have to do to survive. And I got a plan for that shit. You know when you were a kid and there was no emulators, no fast forwards? It was just you and your game console. You had to sit there all day grinding, building up that level so you could take on the trainers and then the gym leaders. It was part of the package deal with Pokemon. When you trained your Pokemon, you worked for it. You took time away from watching Animaniacs and SWAT Cats reruns. You let the homework pile up. You got those Fs in school. But you know what? Squirtle just learned Bubble and Brock is fucking screwed now. Now it's time to get our team built up. I'll start with a Weedle. I'll call him, uh, mm, anal beads. I mean, look at it. And as I found out, Anal Beads is the most useless Pokemon in all God's creation. Now, I could have just went in the Viridian Forest and got a Kakuna, but trust me, you do not want to do that. And anyone that's played this game knows why. Kakuna and Metapod only know how to harden. They have no actual attack. So the only way they can gain experience points is by just showing up at the battle and then switching them out. But if you let your Weedle evolve into a Kakuna, it's got Poison Sting and can actually fight. So you won't have one of those hilarious situations where you got two Kakunas doing a Harden contest, like what happened in the anime. Maximum hardness, Metapod! <laughs> Maximum hardness! If we go in this grassy shit where the Pokemon League's at, we can catch us a Spiro. Ream his ass, anal beads! I'm not even gonna bother with a good name for you, you're just a burb. Nidoran, Nidoran so far away- I'm funny, laugh! Now to get a Rattata and we'll call you Germ- Oh, fuck it, your name is Jack. Hey, we got a team now, but we still need a sixth. Almost immediately, he encounters the rarest Pokemon of all, the Pidgey. It's just a goddamn bird. Yeah, Pidgey's original sprite is just bird.jpg. <laughs> and after a serious grinding session, it's time to face Brock. But first, we gotta face his little minion. Stretch out his asshole, anal beads. You useless piece of shit. Well, don't send a cocoon to do a bird's job. Oh. People shit on Rattata, but a lot of people don't realize once he gets Quick Attack and Hyper Fang, he's actually pretty useful. And here's Brock. Okay, guys, are you waiting on me to say, oh, drying pan, am I right, gamers? I'm sure you're probably tired of that joke at this point, so I'm gonna make my own joke. Uh... Oh, two rednecks and two businessmen were in a pickup truck. The businessmen were sitting in the back of the truck in the bed. They have an accident and drive off a bridge into the river. The businessmen died, the rednecks live. A police officer asked, what happened to the businessmen? They were in the back of the truck. They could have swam out. The rednecks said they were trying to get the tailgate open. <laughs> Anyway, Brock's a pushover, nothing a little turtle wax can't fix. Defeating his onyx isn't no big deal, just get him before he uses his bite on you. Did you know that the penis of an onyx is shaped like an octagon? Well, the good news is I've got my boulder badge now, but the bad news is, after we get through with all these trainers, we're about to enter one of the worst parts of this game. But first, the shorts guy. I like shorts. They are comfy and easy to wear. Now anal beads is a bee drill, and honestly, he still ain't that great. My ass is super effective, but it doesn't hurt to let him take out a few cocoonas. I mean, it's free experience. Ugh, I am not looking forward to this part. There's a guy in this Pokemon Center that will sell you a Magikarp for 500 bucks. Now, today, everybody knows that Magikarp becomes a Gyarados who is really badass. But think back to the 90s before anybody had this information, and you're just given this Pokemon that doesn't have any proper moves. Any self-respecting gamer would just trash it. And I got the patience to keep leveling the shit up, so fuck it. Uh, Mount Moon. One, two, three, there we go. When you enter this cave, you will encounter 5,679,323,969 Zubats on a slow day. It's a big cave and everything looks the same. Luckily, if you do go the wrong way, there's items in several places. So if you do go down the wrong path, there's at least something there. Like Water Gun, which you should really give your Squirtle. At least there's trainers in here, so you've got something else to fight other than Zubats. Also, I love that there's a type of trainer in this cave called the Super Nerd. What do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a super nerd. Oh, really? How's that working out for you? I'm a depressed introvert that's scared to commit to a relationship. Also, I have a Magnemite. All right, everybody, count to three. One, 
two. There you go. If you're not fighting a Zubat within three seconds, your game is fucked up. Might as well catch one. Oh, this name's gonna be easy. Fuck yourself. We meet Team Rocket for the first time in this cave. And Jesse and James aren't in this game, but they are in yellow. One, two, yep. I've always wondered how the Pokemon spawning works in this game. Is it RNG or is there like set tiles where the Pokemon pop up and then it randomizes every battle? You find another super nerd in this cave that's got two fossils and he lets you have one when you beat him. Well, if you beat him. I didn't have any potions, no revives, no nothing. So I was kind of running on fumes. Therefore, I lost this fight. And guess what I get to do? Go through the whole cave again. One, two, there we go. You know, if it weren't for emulators, I'd be really fucking pissed right now. You know how long it takes to get through this cave doing it legit? You will be so tired of seeing Zubats after you leave this fucking cave. You know what? It still sticks with me to this day because in Brilliant Diamond, I have a gold bat that I named Gen 1 Caves. Actually, I don't. Apparently, I traded it off. Anyway, I get the fossil, then I leave this stinking ass cave. Oh no, the IRS caught up with me, and he's kicking my ass. But apparently, Bulbasaurs don't like being mega punched, unlike the women I date. Now, I'm going in this patch of grass because I want to grind some, but also because I want to catch an Abra, and there's a reason for that. Once you get a psychic Pokemon, you've won the game. The psychic Pokemon in this game are so freaking overpowered. It's like catch Abra, make him Kadabra, you've won the game. I'm gonna call him banned from tournament play. Now you do have to work to make Abra usable because most of them only know teleport, which will actually let you fast travel to a Pokemon Center. Mario, use teleport attack. Then we meet a guy who's turned himself into a Pokemon, and honestly, what self-respecting furry wouldn't want to do that? I mean, come on, I'd make a good Lycan Rock. Then we fight Misty, and man, her Starmie is a badass. It takes a lot of hitting to knock it down. Why do I even bother with you? Turtle Wax gives the finishing blow though, and Misty gives me Bubble Beam, which is a really good move. You wouldn't think so, cause what, what the fuck? If they're shooting bubbles at somebody? What are they like, poison acid bubbles or something? What kind of a pussy are you if bubbles hurt you? What are you, bubble phobic? But like I said, it's a good move and it does some serious damage. I would feel bad for this little guy if it wasn't for the fact I have no love or compassion for animals or people. Now we're in a cruise ship and we're just dead ass knocking out trainers room by room. You pup, how dare you barge in? I know, man, I'm just walking up in people's rooms, beating the shit out of their Pokemon. And this is what I mean when I say Rattata becomes a badass when he gets Hyper Fang. He's ripping him a new asshole. The Pokemon are now taking it up the butt. Now Jack is Eradicate and shit is really gonna get real now. One thing that I learned is Quick Attack is a really good finishing move since it always attacks first so you don't get beaten by a guy with one HP. Look y'all, it's old Thickachu. Back before they slimmed him down, Look at his little T-Rex arms. You know what I never understood? Why is he named Pikachu? You know, most of the Pokemon names are puns of something or relate to what they are. How does Pikachu translate into electric mouse? Or did they just pull that name out of their ass? The captain is puking his guts out in his office. Then you start rubbing his back? Ten-year-old kid rubbing some old guy's back? Uh, uh, I don't like that. He gives us an HM, which allows us to cut the vine that's blocking our way to the gym. Now here's where the modern games have improved greatly on this mechanic. In Gen 1, you gotta break out the HM, teach it to a Pokemon, then go to that Pokemon and use the move. Later games just let you press a button in front of the vine and just cut it immediately. What's worse is in Gen 1, if you teach them an HM move, you cannot delete that move. That move will forever be in its list. So a good idea is to make a throwaway Pokemon that has a bunch of HMs on it and just use it as a tool. Now we're in the Vermilion Gym and this is where the game started that old tradition of gyms having puzzles. You look for two switches to open up the door to the gym later. You have to find them both at the same time. If you find the first one and don't find the second one, it resets where the buttons are. It's kind of like that Deltarune puzzle. You know what? A Pokemon mechanic is probably what changed
chapter three needs. You can do battles with all the monsters you recruit. That'd be awesome. You know you want to play as task manager. Now we're fighting Lieutenant Surge and I love his fucking sprite. He looks like he's taking a shit. <laughs> Damn, Raichu's a big boy too. Needs to lay off them donuts. Guys, here's how you beat Surge. Get Diglett to win. This Diglett is a way lower level than Raichu and is still kicking his ass. Where do you get a Diglett? The Diglett Cave. And it's right next to Vermilion City. It's like the game is literally giving you the Pokemon to win with. You can get a Doug Trio too if you stay in there long enough. Let's see, your name will be... Oh, shut up! Man, I'm glad in the later games they found ways to make that less annoying. Your name is Butt Goblin. Ugh, not another cave. And there you are, right on cue. Luckily, we found something Anal Beads is actually good at, taking these things out. Count with me. One, two, there we go. You know, I will give it kind of a break. Sometimes it's a different Pokemon. And I'm not saying I don't like random battles. I'm just saying I don't need one every five fucking seconds. I mean, once I've caught a Zubat and a Mod chop and a geo dude and that's about all you need oh no dos tres quat there we go i draw pokemon when i'm home oh yeah i'm very aware the trainer is fucking this del fox and it stretched out pussy do you know about cost for fuck's sake the, the jokes just write themselves at this point and we're out of that cave and oh shit i just realized where we're about to go oh this place everybody sing along Fuck me. Everybody and their mother has made a video of fucking Lavender Town haunted gamer moments creepy pasta bullshit. I can hear chills right now. Number 15, Pokemon Satan Red. If you play Pokemon Red at 3 a.m., you will notice that in real life it is dark outside. Holy shit, real life hacks. We'll come back here, but first we gotta go to Celadon. Oh, hell, not this place. Okay, guys, real talk, I used to be a compulsive gambler. This is the worst place I need to be. Okay, I'll just play one time. Just one time. Oh, well, I guess I have money to do it again. <laughs> Tell you what, why don't y'all go to commercial and I'll see y'all in a little bit. Working Man Games will be right back after Stu feeds his gambling addiction. So, Stu, how much money did you make? What money? So it turns out Team Rocket owns this casino, surprise, surprise. And after beating this guy that ain't got shit but eradicate and a Zubat, which my Kadabra banned from tournament, used as a cock sleeve, I go into Team Rocket's hideout, which has this pretty infamous puzzle. I used to have a lot of trouble with this one, but now I know it by heart. Yet I can't remember what day the 4th of July comes on. Then I beat Giovanni, boom, 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 self-scope. Then I pay Erica a visit, and once again prove how fucking overpowered the psychic poke. Pokemon are. Oh, it's the spaghetti Pokemon. I often forget that guy even exists. Is he even good for anything? Comment section, help me out. Now to go behind the Pokemart and get us an Eevee? Your name is not a boy, so now you can finally say your name. You know, the bad thing about nicknaming your Pokemon funny shit is you forget what they are. Because I don't care what that fucking copy pasta says, Jolteon rocks. Now to feed this Jolteon some Poke steroids. Swolteon, haha. <laughs> now let's go back to hyper-realistic Bloodville. When you think about it, Pokemon Tower is a creepy thing. It's where people come to mourn their dead Pokemon. So it confirms that Pokemon can in fact die. And in the upper floors, there's gravestones all over the place. And the people that work there are getting possessed by ghost Pokemon, which thanks to the self scope, we can actually fight. When you catch a ghastly, they're not really good for anything. The anime said that you could kill a psychic Pokemon with them, but that was a bullshit lie. Speaking of ghosts, the game tells you about a Marowak that was killed by Team Rocket and his Cubone baby now lives with a family in Lavender Town. Well, you meet a ghost that the self-scope identifies as the ghost of the Marowak, and you have to defeat her. Pokeballs don't work on her. I could have sworn up and down that I've actually caught this Marowak before, but maybe I caught a different one. Anyway, you save a guy from Team Rocket, you get the Poke Flute, and you wake this big son of a bitch up. Let me tell you something, you want to catch you a Snorlax. If he was an FPS enemy, they would call him a bullet sponge. The boy is a freaking tank. Got defense stats up the wazoo. If a nuclear holocaust happened in the Pokemon world, all that would be left is Snorlaxes and whatever the fuck this thing is. Also, an old man let me touch his rod. I give this gate guard something to drink and then I can go to Saffron City. Team Rocket has taken over a building called Silphco and now it's up to a simple child to thwart the efforts of a massive evil organization. 
Because Japan. And there are plenty of Rocket members to fight in here. <laughs> what the fuck is up with Macho? His fucking face. Smug aura mocks me. What's really aggravating about this building is that there's teleporters everywhere. And there's so many rooms and everything looks the same, so you'll get confused to where you've been and where you haven't been. For what seems like several days, Stuart finds himself running around in circles aimlessly because his pride won't let him just fucking look up a walkthrough on YouTube. I met Giovanni again. I spam Psychic a hundred times and I beat him. I get the Master Ball and we all know what that's for. I go to the Saffron Gym and oh my god, more of those teleporters. Uh, I have a feeling I'm gonna be here a while. I'll be honest, when I played this game as a kid, I had a strategy guide. But now I don't and I'm too lazy to Google it, so now I'm just dancing in the dark now. Oh, that actually took less time than I thought it would. So then we fight Sabrina, and she has Psychic Pokemon, the one thing that might actually be a threat in this game. Luckily, I can be an asshole and use Sand Attack. Haha, <laughs> get fucked. Hey guys, did you know that in terms of offensive potential, Jolteon is the strongest evolution? Not only are they the best in speed stats, Jolteon are an average of- I'm not doing this joke. Now we're in Fuchsia City and hot take people, the Safari Zone is bullshit. I understand what they were trying to do, but it's not fun or rewarding at all. And the Pokemon you find here ain't even all that great. Except Rhyhorn, he's okay. Your name is Skinnerd because it's the first name that popped into my mind. For anyone who hasn't played this game, I'm gonna pretend you exist. You get 500 footsteps to catch Pokemon in this fenced-in area. You can't battle them. You either have to throw bait or a rock at them. Or just throw the ball outright like I do. Because more often than not, the Pokemon run away when you do the other crap. Come on. Oh, you're fucking kidding me. Oh, here, have a rock, you little shithead. Oh, you can fuck right off. The only reason you should even play this part is to find the park owner's false teeth so he can give you the strength HM and also to make it to the last cabin in the area that has the surf HM. So basically, you have to go here and you'll get here by the skin of your teeth, too. Your steps still count down in the cabin. So it's possible to be one step off from talking to the guy in here and then be sent all the way back. I really enjoy the Fuchsia Gym's vaporwave aesthetic here. It did the pink and blue before it was cool. Okay, this is where modern technology kind of ruins this part. There's supposed to be an invisible maze here, but you could clearly see where the wall is. On a shitty-ass CRT TV in the 90s, or on your little Game Boy screen, you couldn't make it out. But I think that's one of the many things that Emulator Jesus has brought us. Emulator Jesus, thou shalt upscale. So Koga's Poke- Oh, God, I forgot coughing used to look like that. Anyway, he's got poison Pokemon, and what do poison Pokemon do? Other than get KO'd by Hyperfang? They poison you. Oh, goody. And here's a muck, and yeah, I know what you're all thinking. And yes, it's true. If you rearrange the letters in muck, you get MKU, which means Mortal Kombat Universe. And come. Now we're gonna go on the cycling road, but we need a bicycle. And I never got the bicycle, but we don't need it. Watch. This is a classic right here. Yeah, get fucked, game. You can come over here without the bicycle and it'll just give it to you. Don't throw the game, throw Pokeballs instead. Dude, do you know how much this game is worth now? Like hell, I'm gonna throw it. I kick myself for selling my blue cartridge. I still got red and yellow, though. So somebody out there has my level 100 Nidoqueen that has Earthquake, Ice Beam, Surf, and something else. It's been a long time. What's funny about this cycling path is it has a lot of trainers on it, but if you get on this left side right here, you you can skip almost every trainer. In fact, if you move around just right, you can skip every one. There's another Snorlax. We've already got one, so this one can go fuck itself. Now, what are we doing over here? Well, we need to cut this vine, we need to go to this house, and we get the Fly HM. Yay, fast travel! And now we're gonna surf on our Blastoise all the way to sit A. Oh, the tumor heads. And they call the pretty red spot on their heads happy. It always bothered me that there was a whole bunch of people just swimming around in the sea. If you released a Geodude, Dude out here, would he sink to the bottom? If he dropped a Magnemite in here, you'd kill everything that was in the sea. Maybe they treat Magnemites like car batteries. Once they run out of electricity, they just throw them in the ocean. I 
have a problem with Cinnabar Island. Where does everybody live? There's a Pokemon Center, a Pokemart, a science lab, and a burned out building. And a Pokemon gym. Where do these people live? There's no houses. There's a Pokemon Theory video for you. Where do the people in Cinnabar Island live? All right, boys, you're about to see a fucking miracle. I'm going to take a fossil and turn it into an Almanite, and then I'm never, ever going to use it. Instead, I'm going to go in this building and beat the shit out of Weezings and Ponytas. Maybe a Growlithe for good measure. Now, this burned out building is actually where you find out the lore of Mewtwo. Now, everybody and their mama knows Mewtwo. He gets thrown off of stages and smashed if you look at him funny. Now, the lab is another one of those places it feels like it's spawns Pokemon every five seconds. But at this point in the game, you can buy a whole bunch of repels and get rid of that if it bothers you enough. The whole point of coming in here is to get the secret key so you can open up the gym. Yeah, I lost my anytime fitness key a long time ago. Not that I was using it. Cinnabar gym is simple. You just have to go through every single trainer till you get to Blaine. And he looks like a cross between Revolver Ocelot and Eggman. You know what to do. Bring out the psychic Pokemon and watch them fall. The trainer is shit out to luck. Oh god, Arcanine. What happened to you? He's got a big overbite and he looks like he's going, Bleh. Oh, it's getting close here. Can I take him down in one hit? No, I cannot. Oh, you mother! That's a negatory, good buddy. That's the end of that. Before we get that last badge, let's try to get one of them birds. I'm not too worried about the spawn rate in here because there's a lot of Pokemon in here that I don't have. Come to daddy. Oi, mate, we found us a nugget! Light put cell! Oh. This one's kind of annoying because the current will take you wherever it wants to go. I don't have any control right now until this part. So you gotta use strength to move these boulders to block the current. So we'll just move the- Oh, for God! sakes i'm busy here do you mind holy shit ah there we go now the current's blocked off and we can move wherever the hell we want there he is there's articuno boys get ready you're coming home with me son get it oh come on man okay i'll try again you are kidding me and he defeated every Pokemon I had. Thank God for save states. So after some digging, I found out the only way that you could get the legendary birds is by using a status ailment on them, like putting them to sleep. So I picked a really bad time to save state. Maybe I can run and then do the fight again later. Well, I fucked that up. So I go to the Viridian Gym and I fight Giovanni one more time. And my trusty turtle with guns, Blastoise, Turtle Wax makes short work of him. And now it's to the Pokemon League. But first, I get a visit from somebody that everybody fears, the IRS. And it's actually kind of a tough battle. You could consider it a skill check before you go to the Pokemon League proper. He's got an Alakazam that knows Recover and Psychic, which makes him, oh. And he goes through my Pokemon like a hot knife through butter. Luckily, my own psychic Pokemon helped finish the battle. Kadabra is like the Pokemon that will bail you out of prison by using hypnosis on everybody. Speaking of which, I'm actually surprised that none of the snake Pokemon can learn hypnosis. I bet there's some art of that. So now we're on Victory Road, and I've turned the emulator speed up just a tad because I got shit to do. Anyway, we got to get through here to get to the Elite Four, but first we got to move some boulders around, and we got to fight some trainers. Hey, is that Moltres? Let's fucking go! Oh, I just totally forgot. I need a Pokemon that puts it to sleep. Worst fucking playthrough ever. I am gonna hear about this in the comments. Whoo, boy, we made it. We are almost done with this video. I feel like I've been working on it for two months. First comes Lorelei with the ice Pokemon. And damn it, that Cloyster knows Supersonic. I hate when they get confused. She takes a lot of my team down, but my Kadabra pulls through. Then we got Bruno, and most of his stuff is weak to water or psychic, so I'm good there. Then comes Agatha with her ghost Pokemon. Her first Gengar is kind of a dumbass because it keeps trying to do dream. Meter. Dream eater. I'm about to show you guys why I love quick attack. Get fucked. Uh oh, literally none of my moves work on a ghost Pokemon. Time to call in the old standby. And now it's time for Lance the Dragon Boy, and he is no joke. His Gyarados has got Hydro Bump and Hyper Beam, which are both very powerful. See there? 
His Dragonair's got it too, and it takes out my best Pokemon. Now I'm fucking screwed. Anal beads, I never needed you more than I need you now. Kick us out. Oh, you fucking serious. You have been a piece of shit since I started this game, and you will always be a piece of shit. The name Anal Beads is too good for you. When I get done with this, I'm gonna change your nickname to Vaginal Vomiting. Well, long story short, I got to his Dragonite. Dragonite hyper beamed me, and I ran out of Pokemon. And we gotta do all four of them all over again. And I reached started and did all four over and over and over again. I even got up to the rival a couple of times, but I just continuously, continuously got my ass kicked. And the deadline to get this video done was getting closer and closer and closer. So I finally put my size 13 cowboy boot down and I said, it's time to play dirty. And that, friends, is how I beat Pokemon Red, unfair and unsquare. My Pokemon got put in the Hall of Fame, and I got to see the creditos. So what are my thoughts on Pokemon Gen 1, the OG, the original? So here's the deal. I don't think somebody who didn't grow up with the game would like it. There's just so much that's missing that's in modern Pokemon nowadays. It's really jank, unbalanced, and kind of broken. But I tell you, when we played this in the 90s, it was a masterpiece. And the times that it wasn't monotonous or repetitive, I actually did have a lot of fun. So much that I'm actually planning to play the game legitimately on my Super Nintendo for the first time in 20 years. In fact, after I raise the Pokemon on my physical cartridge, I want to take the those and put them into Pokemon Stadium, which I also have. If this video does good enough, I'll do a Pokemon Stadium review one day. We'll just have to see. But anyway, that's it. That's the end. But it isn't, is it? We still have unfinished business, don't we? Well, let's go get them, boys. Getting to Mewtwo's not that hard, and it doesn't take very long either. There's a little bit of a maze you have to go through, and then you surf some, and there he is, in that generic Rhydon sprite. <laughs> There he is, boys, the Mewtwo himself. You know what to do. Grab that damn Master Ball and claim him as yours. Now we can say we've finished this game. But you know what? I've made the greatest, most powerful Pokemon ever known to man, and I have destroyed every Pokemon in my path with them with their level 100 awesomeness. I don't need you, Mewtwo. I have Pokemon way more powerful than you. You know what? Mewtwo, you're going down. Thought I was alone, left out in the cold again. And so, Stuart became the ultimate Pokemon master, defeated you two, fucked up getting the legendary birds, and then never played Pokemon Generation 1 again. Well, I really do hope that you appreciated my video. I know there's a hundred of these Gen 1 videos out there. Well, here's another one. If you like what you saw, consider being a patron. Five dollar tiers get to see the videos before anybody else. And a Patreon Discord. And you can still become a patron for one damn dollar and get your name on the board. Well, my name is Stuart K. Riley, as you can see from all these links. I will see you guys some other time. And don't fuck Vaporeons.